I have a confession to make. I don't much like grain in my landscape photography. My name is David Patton. When I started photography, I wanted to make art. I wanted to be a landscape photographer. But with a family to feed and bills to pay, I decided it would be better to be a working photographer than a starving artist. So I took a job as a photojournalist. 25 years and thousands of assignments later, it was time to go back to my first love. It was time to follow my passion. Come along on my journey to become the best black and white photographer I can be. Whether it be film or digital, I will be sharing what I learned through my successes and my failures in hopes to inspire and educate. This is my journey. This is right in the edge. Yep, I'm not a big fan of grain in my film photography. Never have been. We'll get back to that in a little bit. Today I decided to take the film camera out. I haven't been out with it for quite a while. All my darkroom equipment is uh, packed away as we're getting ready to try to move. But I just decided I'm just going to have to pull it out and develop some film because I, I really miss it. So today we're out in the woods just kind of looking for some compositions. Sunskin popping in and out of the clouds. It's a really nice day. Mosquitoes aren't too bad. Right now I'm just kind of uh, lining up a shot on this trail with uh, in between these trees here in the background. Might be a nice composition. I know it does sound kind of weird that um, someone who enjoys using film doesn't really like the look of grain in his images. Mostly landscape images. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of weird. But even when I didn't have a choice to use film, I always try to minimize the grain in my, in my photographs. And that, that just means using slower speed films. I rarely would shoot a landscape at 400 ISO. It's usually 100 speed film for me. Now, I can understand the grain in documentary type photography. You just, you have to use faster shutter speeds. The only thing you can do is use faster film. And that trade-off is more grain. I don't mind it so much for that. But in landscape photography, I do have a choice. I can use slower speeds. And if it's just the conditions aren't right for it, I probably just won't take the picture. Just because I don't like the look of excessive grain or a lot of grain in my landscape photography doesn't mean I don't expect to see grain. I just try to minimize it as, as much as possible. I do that with slower ISO films. I try to get the correct exposure. And another thing I, I have done in the past, and today I'm kind of doing it, I'm using a medium format, is I'll use a, a larger negative. So when I do magnify the image, it takes more magnification before the grain becomes more apparent. Now, that doesn't mean I won't use 35 millimeter for landscape photography. It just means that my expectations for enlargements will be less. So I just won't enlarge the image as much as I would with medium format or large format. But those limitations aren't really that major to me. I mean, most of the stuff I shoot would probably be for magazine book sizes anyway, and really 35 millimeters is plenty good for that especially at slower, slower speed films. You could probably even get away with medium speed films if you don't crop too much. And cropping is another thing that I, I don't do a lot of when I'm shooting film to minimize the 
enlargement of the grain. Now, I am aware that it seems to be kind of cool to embrace grain, say, say you love it. <laughs> it's kind of a trendy thing, but uh, not, it's just not for me. Now, you might, well, then you might say, well, why don't you just shoot digital if you don't like grain? The, the amount of grain that I, I get in my workflow is, is fine. It, it, it's because I know how to control it, because I know what I'm, how much grain there's going to be in my images. I'm not looking for buttery smooth. I just don't want excessive grain. I like the process of shooting film. I like the archivability of it. I like the craftsmanship of it and the challenge of it. So these are a lot of reasons for, for, for me to shoot film. So yes, I can get a much smoother looking image in digital. Smooth isn't what I'm going for. I just don't want excessive grain. Another way I try to minimize grain is in my editing, in my digital workflow. I try not to over sharpen. I do uh, more spot sharpening. If there's if it's, if the image has like a lot of sky in it, I really don't need to sharpen the sky that much, but, uh, if any. I just tend to sharpen the areas that um, wouldn't have uh, a boost in grain, like the foliage, the trees. If I was shooting a stream, I would sharpen everything probably, but the the, the water, the water was kind of smooth. I mean, you really no reason to have that sharp. And all that's going to do is, is sharpen the grain. So I, I tend to spot sharpen a lot of my files. But there are scenes that, you know, even out here, I could I could get away with sharpening the whole scene. Uh, I, t I tend to not sharpen a whole lot. But the digital process does seem to need a little bit of sharpening, whether that be for film scans or even my digital cameras tend to use... Um, tend to benefit from a little bit of sharpening. And my efforts to minimize grain has got me thinking, do I need another, a larger negative? Should I be considering going to a large format, maybe four by five? It's pretty amazing how much quality there is in a uh, four by five negative. I just can't decide if that's the way I want to go. My two and a quarter starting to show signs of age. It's uh, starting to glitch a little bit. The mirror starting to stick up. I'm trying to decide if I should just go ahead and instead of replacing that body, pick up a, um, a a basic field camera, 4x5 field camera. I already have film holders. I have actually a, a, a lens that would work on a large format camera. I think it's a 135 millimeter which is kind of close to normal, slightly wide angle. The only thing about going large format is it really slows you down and you, it, it changes your, your uh, approach to photography just because it takes much longer to set up the shot. The breeze is starting to blow a little bit. I don't know, I'll, something I, I'm gonna keep thinking about. If I'm gonna keep shooting film, and I want as little grain as possible. Maybe I should just be going to larger format. Stay tuned. We'll, we'll uh, I'll let you know if I uh, decide to get something like that. So how about you? Do you like grain? Is it something that you enjoy seeing in your images? Do you have tricks that you use to minimize the grain? If you're like me and you don't really want to see a whole lot of it in your in your final image. Do you just go to a larger piece of film? Or are you just not enlarging the images more than the grain will allow? And that's, that's kind of how I've been dealing with it. Just not, you know, if, I'm, if I have a smaller piece of film, I just don't enlarge the image as much as I would a bigger piece of film. It's really not that difficult to minimize the grain.
hard. <laughs> Once I get down, if I can get down there, it's probably still not going to be a shot. Got to think positive. Well, I see one or I see a, a possible path. We're going to try it one more time to get to get to the spot. Looks like there might be some rocks down just 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 to put this little this little shelf. So I'm hoping that once I get down there, there's going to be a place to set up my tripod. I've been driving by this little water shelf, this little uh, little waterfall for years. I never tried to get a camera on it. <laughs> and I thought today I'm going to see if I can shoot this and get some uh, shoot some film. And it's proving to be a little more of a challenge than I uh, expected. Well, I'm gonna have to put all this stuff down, and I'm not, I'm not gonna be filming this probably on the way down. So, uh, if I make it down there, you'll know. Wish me luck. Really tight quarters in here. After all that work to get down here, I'm not really sure it was really worth the effort. I think I need a little bit wider angle lens for this uh, location. It's the only spot I could get is on the, this little rock bed. It's quite a challenge. I uh, took a I had to bracket quite a few different exposures. The light's been changing pretty fast. When I first started heading down here, it was overcast, and then the sun popped out when I got down here. I was kind of hoping that the sun would have stayed behind the clouds so I could use a little bit longer exposure. So we'll see. I should have brought an ND filter with me. But when I started down here, it was, I was pretty confident that my polarizer and 100 speed film would let me use the slow dump shutter speed. Oh well, you can see all that sweat on me. It's quite a bit of work getting down here. I think I'm going to wrap it up here and head on down the road and see if there's something else I can find. Well, it looks like my uh, battery is just about dead on this camera and I forgot to bring it extra. So we're going to end today's video right here. Just finished off a roll of film. Last shot here in the Sorrel. I have about two or three compositions that I'm going to put in this video. So until next time, thanks for coming along with the ride. <laughs>